basically you fill this thing with raw bones that, from our slaughter operation and our meat processing operation in Colorado Springs. We bring those back every week when we pick up carcasses and they go into this. And then we, we, we create a fire down below here, which raises the temperature up inside the, the internal cylinder and takes off all of the moisture. And once that moisture disappears out of these, out of these uh, stacks on top, then we put the lids on and by then the contents is producing a gas, which is the, the, the gas then that drives the, the fire at the bottom of the retort to increase the heat up to over 900 degrees, completing the process of pyrolysis and turning the bone into carbon. Hi, I'm Scott Wilson. I'm the master gardener here at the Galileo Gardens Project. And part of what you see are the 105 raised beds that we have at the Galileo School of Math and Science. All of these beds, all of this entire project is designed so that middle school students can learn every aspect of gardening. In fact, they're immersed in every aspect of gardening. They've sown the seeds, they thin the seeds, they fertilize, they harvest, they actually bag up the produce to go into the school lunch program where they all can enjoy it, and we share it with the senior center down the street so the seniors can benefit from what we have. We look forward to years from now where we're actually sharing with the community in a much larger scale. But for now, we're focused on just the kids and developing this program to be a center for education in gardening in Colorado Springs. And, and the, the, the value of this is, what do you do with bones? Well, we can compost them like we do over here, but the problem is it takes a long time and you always end up with bones that are out and about and in the fields and so forth. But the real challenge was what do you do with the skull and the teeth? With the enamel on the teeth, they never compost. You'll never get the tooth fully composted in a, in, a, in a typical composting operation. So my real interest was, when I heard about this process, would we be able to do bones? And so I went back to Ohio, I met the people that, that have, that have uh, designed this, this system, and we did a, we did a, a batch of bones. And I was amazed, it, it, it totally carboned the bones and the teeth as well. So the teeth are gone now, and, and we, then we take we take the product from in here and we basically put it in a grinder where it's ground up into a, a much a, a fine grind, anywhere from the size of a kernel of corn to the, the size of a, of a grain of sand. And then that is blended in, in, in a way that we activate that is blended with a compost tea. Uh, and that then puts the bacteria into, the, into this bone char, which if you look at it, has got thousands of microscopic little porous places where the bacteria move in. And these are the bacteria that do the real work of, of, plant, of providing plants their nutrients. So basically what the char is, is a home for the microflora, the bacteria, the, the fungi, and those things in the soil that make it live. It feeds the earthworms. And, and so uh, it, it, you need to break it up and, 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 and get this all exposed to so the micro uh, life can move in and start to do their job. Once established, once this is in the root zone of the soil, it basically lasts indefinitely. So it, it's really in there as a home. It does, and biochar, as you, we would typically know about biochar, doesn't really supply soil nutrients as much as a home for the, micro, for the bacteria. Unlike regular biochar though, bone char is about 37% phosphorus and about 33% calcium. So it's bringing with it soil nutrients. And depending on what you're growing, what kind of plants that you're, that you're producing, that can have a huge value added benefit because phosphorus is a disappearing mineral and nutrient on the globe. And what is there today is controlled by a handful of companies that are fixing price. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity to take bones that would have otherwise been, been probably turned into meat and bone meal or composted and to, and to turn it into bone char, which is really great for the soil, the microbial life, but also brings the phosphorus that we need and the, and the calcium that we need in many of our soils that are deficient. And how do you plan to put this back into the soil on your farm, on your ranch? What we want to do, we're going to plant a bunch of trees here, and they're going to be a variety of trees, from honey locust to fruit trees, to we're going to do a bunch of sort of agroforestry type development on our farm. There's about 1,200 acres here in one piece that we plan on really focusing on. What we're going to do is, 
is we're going to take a probably a yeoman plow shank and we're going to modify that plow shank with a with a, an injection tube on the back side of it with a with a big tank and a pump system so we'll make like compost tea in, in something like this water trailer tank and and then we will go out there and actually inject this right down into the soil where those tree roots are going to are going to be reaching and probably go in about 18 inches but put a fair amount of the product into the soil we do, and we do that one year prior to planting basically so that'll get done in the next month or so and we'll prepare the soil so that when the tree is planted all of the nutrients are there being produced and that tree it grows a lot faster has a much better chance of of being a good productive tree long term so from a rooftop garden to a ranch in kansas this is useful anywhere it's useful absolutely anywhere you want to grow something to eat and re and restore health back to the soil there's nothing that we know of right now today there's nothing that we know of that does more to put carbon back in the soil and improve the health of the soil than biochar. Bone char is a category of biochar and, 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 it's, and it's special because it's so high in phosphorus and calcium. All of our garden is built on what used to be tennis courts at a middle school. We've lost the tennis courts and now we've created this immense gardening space. I'm standing inside our 42 foot geodesic dome greenhouse the students have planted everything you see in front of me and behind me. One of the things that we're quite interested in as we develop our garden space is the soil, not only its tilth, but its fertility. And one of the things that is very important, thanks to Mike Calicrate and Ranch Foods Direct, is bone char. Bone char, and we will be conducting extensive trials with this product, is essentially bones from the cows that Mike and Ranch Foods Direct raise on their Kansas ranch. We add this to the soil to make all the plants grow much, much better. What happens as you start with the bone is that all of the chambers that would normally be the structure of the bone for all the beneficial soil bacteria to reside. So when the soil has been amended with compost and other beneficial bacteria that comes in to feed on the compost and the other organic material in the soil, this gives them a place to live for a very long time. Studies so far have shown that char, the biochar in particular, will last hundreds and hundreds of years. Terra Preta, a site in South America, has this char after thousands of years. We're hoping that our project lasts just a fraction of that time, and this is what's going to help. The microbes, the beneficial bacteria reside in here and they're essentially a permanent part of the soil from that time. Why is it so good? Because as the roots of the plants go down, they now have a ready source for all of the bacteria that essentially takes the good pieces of the soil, the nutrients that they need, part of it being the phosphorus and the calcium, and then they turn it through the ionization stage into a, a, a process where the plants can actually utilize it. Some of my own personal tests have shown germination rates to be far superior in the biochar beds as opposed to the non-biochar beds. I did some studies with cucumbers, for instance. My biochar amended beds with the cucumbers germinated in two to three days. The non-biochar beds, the very first seeds were germinating after five days. The first fruit in the char beds on the cucumbers a full week before the very first fruit in the non-biochar beds. I had 100% germination of the biochar beds. I had 85% germination in the non-biochar beds. I'm sold on this product. It is amazing. And we're planning to actually incorporate this into every single bed in the Galileo Gardens project. So this, I might just add, Harry, this really makes a mobile slaughter unit or, or a, a rural slaughter facility like we have here where we slaughter animals where they're at, really gives us another value added option. So we can take bones that were otherwise going in a compost pile and now we can produce a really valuable soil, soil component uh, for customers. And, and with all of the growth of urban gardens around the country, in cities especially, the bigger cities, uh, this is this is going to be a very a, a very welcome thing.
for, for those gardens. And that's where we'll start out and, and, and try to take care of whatever needs there are there. And then who knows, eventually we may end up with bigger systems, more of them, and hopefully someday get, it, get this incorporated into some farmland. But for sure it'll go into wherever you're planting trees, like orchards, fruit trees, the smaller, more intense operations where, we, where you can really focus more on the soil at, at an affordable price uh, with better returns uh, from like a fruit crop or a, a tree crop or, or something like that. I think it has a, a lot of great application. This really reconnects people to their food, to the land. It has the potential to really provide them a much more nutritious product that you can't match anywhere else. So I think adding a lot of strength to the local food systems, uh, differentiation to the industrial food system. And, and by getting more people to grow their own food in their backyards, to start learning more about soil health and what it takes to, to really have good food from good soil, I, I think you just get a lot more followers to the local food systems, which then eventually builds out a, a much better supply for our food security in, in no matter what country you live in.